The Leafs season starts soon, in like hours. In fact, Saturday night, almost every team in the NHL is playing. So I want to respond to a very frequently asked question that I get on Twitter, Facebook, and I always respond with these little tweets and posts. Why not make a video for everyone? The question, well, because I did highlights for the KHL's official YouTube channel, how did the Leafs in the KHL do? Namely, Mikhail Grabowski, who spent his time with CSKA Moscow, also known as Red Army, Nikolai Kuhlman, who spent his time with Metallurg Magnitogorsk, Leo Komarov, who spent about a month with Dynamo Moscow, reigning KHL champions, and Joffrey Lupul, asterisk, spent uh, like a month with Avdemo Beliste. I'll get Joffrey Lupul out of the way real quick. Uh, he was there for like a month and didn't score very much because he signed with the dead last place team in the entire league. Uh, and then when he came back, he couldn't even name the trophy that you win when you win the KHL, so he didn't do great. It's the Gagarin Cup, by the way. It's good that he did it. It's good that he stayed in shape, and now he's a little bit more in game shape than maybe some other players would be. Uh, but he didn't exactly light it up. Again, horrendous team. Now, Nikolai Kuhlman. Or as it was spelt on his KHL jersey, Kuljomen. Or as it's pronounced in actual reality, Kulemen. Even though I know it's Kulemen, I'm probably not going to stop saying Kuhlman because I, I like it better. Kuhlman, excellent production. In 36 games, he had 14 goals and 24 assists for 38 points. So he scored it over a point per game, which in the KHL is pretty impressive. For example, they played just over 50 games, and the guy who won the scoring race last year for goals anyway was Brandon Bachensky, and he had 27 goals. The big problem with Kuhlman is they still don't have a proper read on him. Because yes, he racked up huge points on a line with Evgeny Malkin. And he had seven power play goals. That's half his goals on a line with Evgeny Malkin, on, at the time and for most of the season, the KHL's best power play. And to water it down even more still, all right, Kuhlman's on the line with Malkin. Who's the third guy? Sergei Mizakin, who's actually the KHL's scoring leader. So while Kuhlman's numbers are good, he was the third highest scorer on a line of three guys. He certainly didn't bring the line down. So I'm not too worried about Kuhlman because he's already in game shape. He's been playing for longer than most. And he's been playing with high talent guys like Malkin and even Mizakin. The problem is, is Kuhlman the guy who scored 30 goals two years ago or the guy who scored seven goals last season? I'm thinking it's got to be somewhere in the middle. But which side of the middle? Because he's such a defensively sound player, plays a lot of time in the penalty kill and based on training camp, it looks like he's going to be on the penalty kill again. If you can get... 20 plus goals out of Kuhlman, that's a successful season. Since it's a 48 game season, well, okay, he scored 14 goals in 36 games in the KHL. Let's say, let's hope he scores 14 in the NHL this season. Keep in mind, we're talking about a season where the Rocket Richard winner is going to have like 30 goals. Now, Mikhail Grabowski, obviously much more on the offensive side than Kuhlman is, but pretty defensively good. In the KHL, he was playing with high talent guys like Alex Radulov or Radulov, whatever, and uh, someone you may have heard of, Pavel Datsuk. Well, in 29 games, Grabowski had 12 goals and 12 assists for 24 points. So scoring less than Kuhlman, actually, which I don't think will be the case in the NHL, but he also got off to a very slow start. And he wasn't always playing with Evgeny Malkin. And he wasn't always playing with the KHL scoring leader. Two overtime winners though. And while Kuhleman's line was more of a everyone kind of touches the puck and then someone scores it eventually, everyone gets points. Grabowski was a much more individual player on Red Army than Kuhleman was, in my opinion, just based on what I saw. I stand by my statement that Kuhleman's line was better. Malkin, damn it! But again, the idea of someone who has been playing hockey over the last few months playing with someone who has also been playing hockey the last few months. Maybe they're on the same mindset, same skill set. Grabowski, Kuhlman, keep them on the same line. Never know, they could restore some of the magic from a couple years ago. Which brings me to a bit of a mystery wild card guy who could actually be on the Leafs opening night roster that a lot of people don't even know about, Leo Komarov. And what a season for the poor guy. Here's how the last not even year panned out for him. So he goes through the 2012 KHL playoffs. He's on Dynamo Moscow. They're plugging through every round. He's annoying people, getting people upset. I watched the highlights. He would bug a guy, a little poke here and there. Other guy would take a two-hand slash at him, get kicked out of the game in a key time. His team would go on to win. Jonas Siegel just wrote an article about Komarov getting some of his uh, Leaf teammates who have played against him in international play to comment on him, and they agreed that he's a pain in the ass. And then boom, they win the KHL championship, the Gagarin Cup. Shortly after they win, still celebrating whatever, hugging the trophy, he speaks to his coach, or GM, can't remember, and he said, listen, I've conquered this, now I want to pursue my goal of trying to make the NHL. Well, 
Komarov. He's a 2006 sixth round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So he belongs to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to go try to make the Leafs. A little background, by the way. He's an Estonian-born Finnish guy who knows perfect Russian and also knows Swedish. So his chirps are like multilingual. So he shows up in North America and he goes, Well, I'm here, ready to make the NHL, fellas. And I think we know what happened next. So he goes down to the Marlies. Not crazy familiar with the North American ice surface, but in 14 games he had 6 goals, 3 assists for 9 points. And before he left... He actually was wearing an A for assistant captain. Cut to deal with the Leafs. Look, let me go back to the KHL. Probably wouldn't have left if I knew this was going to be the case. Let me go back to the KHL. Let me rejoin Dynamo Moscow. And if the lockout ends, I'm going to come back. They say sure, and he heads back. When he gets back to Russia, he notices Dynamo Moscow's roster is a little different, and he's put on the top line with Nicholas Backstrom and Alex Ovechkin, where in 13 games he had two goals, eight assists for 10 points. And he wasn't trying to be something he wasn't. He's not offensively inept, but he's also not a scoring juggernaut. So you saw him crashing into the corner, digging the puck out, being a nuisance in front of the net, creating space for Backstrom and Ovechkin. And this is a debate that's been going on throughout the lockout. I know he's not going to play in the Leafs' top six. I know he's not going to be a guy who racks up the points for the Leafs. But if Leo Komarov can play with Nicholas Backstrom and Alex Ovechkin, he sure as hell can play on the Toronto Maple Leafs. In what role? We'll have to see. In the Leafs' seemingly perpetual pursuit of guys with belligerence and pugnacity and just rrr, get in the other team's face, they got these big huge guys. Komarov's not a huge guy. He is a huge, huge pest though. It's a tradition with the Finns. Essa Tikin and Yarko Rutu, now maybe Leo Komarov. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention to the Marlies a lot over the last year or two, you know that Nazem Kadri is a penalty-drawn machine. Add Leo Komarov into the mix, not necessarily on the same line, but on the same team. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I wonder... So I hope that gave you some insight to the Leafs players that were playing in the KHL during the lockout. Uh, just read an article by James Myrtle of the Globe and Mail. Apparently Kadri and Komarov are supposed to be on the same line. The third line with James Van Riemsdyk. That's very interesting. If you guys have any other questions or whatever, just leave them in the comment box. Get at me on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle. Or leave something on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Steve Dangle page. Oh, I also have a website, stevedangle.com. I'm going to stop talking. And, uh, hockey.